Hello everyone, this is the pre-market report video for today 21st June 2023 in the near shock market in terms of Nifty and Bank Nifty. Yesterday in my pre-market video regarding Chinese interest rate decision, I mentioned that the analysts were expecting 10 basis point reduction and it was correct as per Reuters. I mean the analyst in the Reuters expected a 10 basis point cut but most of the other analysts expected a bigger rate cut. For example, I took the snip from the print news website. Most of the others thinks that 10 basis point reduction won't do any favor for reviving the Chinese economy. They expected at least 15 basis point cut. And this less than expected rate cut dented the global sentiment. Yesterday, this did affect our Indian market as well. And around 10.30 am, Nifty reached the day's low of near 18,660. But after that, there was a huge buying from both FII and DII, which turned the Nifty and pushed above 18,800. Sector wise, only pharma closed slightly negative, other than that, all closed green, especially the power sector, which increased over 1%. Now, coming to institution activities, on paper, FII sold for near 1,940 crore rupees and DII bought for near 1,970 crore rupees. But if we see in detail, as we discussed in last pre-market video, UK-based Aberdeen, previously it was called Standard Life, sold near 1,870 crore rupees worth of HDFC AMC. Day before yesterday, in their Twitter page, they mentioned that they are going to sell for 4,000 crore rupees worth of HDFC AMC shares. So we may expect they might sell further some more this week. In addition, there is another FIA called General Singapore Atlantic sold Krishna Medical Science share worth of near 1,700 crore rupees to SPI mutual fund. So those two FII alone, they sold for over 3,500 crore rupees. If we remove those two from FII sold value means, then they are actually net buyer of 1,600 crore rupees. Anyway, then after the Indian market hovers, all the major index in US market opened flat. But then US Department of Commerce and Census Bureau released the housing data. In May month, the number of new residential buildings that began construction on month-on-month -month basis in US increased 21%. Regarding the absolute number, over 1.6 million number of new residential buildings began their construction against the expectation of just 1.4 million. This is also way higher than the previous month and this is the fastest pace increase since April 2022. This super strong housing stat pushed all three major index in US market down of near 1%. But this housing surprise was downplayed in the afternoon when Jeffries came with the explanation that in April and March all the construction activity in Midwest was stalled due to tornado. And now because of the favorable weather condition in May, there was a spike in activity. And this spike was not because of demand increase. This kind of provided some support and all three index recovered some. But still market was bit cautious since there is a schedule for Fed Chairman testimony tonight and tomorrow. I mean first tonight Fed Chairman is going to testify and explain why rate hike, what is the future and how is going to control the inflation all in front of House Financial Services Committee. Then again the same thing tomorrow in front of Senate Banking Committee. Because of this two major event today and tomorrow, throughout yesterday there was some pressure. At the end of the day, Dow Jones decreased by 0.72%, S&P 500 lost 0.47% and the Nasdaq marginally down by 0.16%. 10 out of 11 major sectors in S&P 500 were ended in negative. In case of VIX, it downed by another 2% and moved below 14%. About tech stocks, except Google, most of the big companies closed to positive, especially Tesla which increased over 5%. Since Rivian Automotive struck an agreement with Tesla to allow its customers to use the Tesla charging network in 2024. For those who don't know, Rivian Automotive is like Tesla, a startup electric vehicle company who is also relatively big in electric vehicle space after Tesla and Lucid Motors. Then regarding oil, China Economic Research Institute forecasted that China's oil demand will grow only by 3.5% in 2023 against the previous forecast of 5.1%.
this is significantly negative still oil dropped only around 1% at the time of this video, Brent crude oil decreased and traded near 75.5 US dollars per barrel and WTO crude oil traded around 71 US dollars per barrel. Moving on, in case of Indian ideas, it was more negative than US market. I mean, if required, please pause it and have a look. All the four stocks in Indian market all closed positive of 0.5 to 1%, but in US, all closed negative of 0 0.5 to 1.5% which is not good for both the sectors. Coming to SX Nifty, at 3 a.m. Indian Standard Time, it closed at 18,880, which indicates the flat opening. That's all about the global market and momentum. In one word, at present, more of the negative side. Coming to India-related information, first about HDFC. Yesterday, Competition Commission of India, CCI, has approved the request by HDFC Bank that they want to increase the shareholding of HDFC Life Insurance Company to over 50% after the merger. Again, this is not a new news. In April, RBA approved it. Now, CCI also approved it. Then the second info, Bharat Electronics has received defense orders worth 5,900 crore rupees from Indian government. I consider this as positive for BEL. As a summary, US market closed to negative, both Indian banks and IT ideas closed to negative and SHMT is indicating a flat opening. However, there is one positive there. Reliance GDR closed significantly positive of over 1.4%. Anyway, moving on, about the items we need to look out today. First, before our market opening, there is a schedule for Bank of Japan's monetary meeting and financial stability report release. Here, as long as there is no drastic change, we don't need to worry. Then at 11.30 a.m. UK's consumer inflation and wholesale inflation data release. At last in the night, as I said earlier, very important US Fed Chairman testimony before House Financial Services Committee. Coming to technical, by combining the last two days, Nifty forms the piercing line pattern formation. I mean, on the first day, market was influenced by sellers and whereas on the second day, that was responded by buyers. This is potentially an indication that the supply of shares that market participants wants to sell had been depleted somewhat and the price was driven down to a level where demand for buying shares have increased. So that's the psychology behind this trading. This pattern formation is a significant reliable indicator of a short term upward forecast. In addition, technically, Nifty took support near 18,662-18,680 region and bounced back. On intraday charts, Nifty formed a double bottom formation, which is also indicating the continuation of an uptrend formation in the near future. However, based on last 5 days trading, now I am feeling that Nifty is stuck between the band 18,650-18,888. So, breaking either side will dictate the direction. In case of Bank Nifty, it also behaved similarly, thus forms a bullish candlestick pattern with a long lower shadow on the daily chart. The daily momentum indicator still has a negative crossover and hence we can expect a range bound action going ahead. At present, on the upside, 20 day moving average is around 44,000. So that's the immediate hurdle and once that is crossed, we can expect a further upside till 44,500 in the short term. So the range of consolidation is likely to be 43,400 to 44,500. From options change in open interest, in case of Nifty, some call options unwound between 18,650 to 18,850 and significant new put option open interest added at below 18,800. And the maximum new nearby put options added at 18,800 followed by 18,650 and 18,700. So 18,700 is the immediate support. Then from overall options open interest data, 18,800 got the very huge short straddle. Maximum huge call option open interest is present at 19,000 and followed by 18,900. Hence, 18,900 is the immediate hurdle and 19,000 is the resistance for the expiry. About Bank Nifty, the story is very similar. From overall options open address data, 43,500 got the maximum nearby put option open address and 44,000 got the maximum nearby call option open address 
without less put options. So 43,500 is the support to look out for and 44,000 is the resistance to break. So that's all in this video. Hope you all got some useful information. Please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the YouTube algorithm and will also motivate me to do more. Please don't make any investigation based on this as I'm not a SEBI registered advisor. I'm doing it for my and viewers educational purpose only. Thanks for watching.